And good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where in the world you are catching me from. Um, great to see so many of you here today. We've got about uh, 2,500 people in the room. Um, so thank you so much for being here. And I really appreciate, again, those of you who have woken up really early in the morning or are staying up really late at night to catch this broadcast. So just to be sure that you can hear me and you can see my slides, could you type a yes in the chat box? Okay, thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate it. So again, I believe that some of you are here today because you want to create another source of additional income for yourself from the financial markets. And some of you are here because you've got savings and you want to grow your savings at a much higher return that's sustainable so you can achieve financial freedom out of the red race in the near future. So yesterday during my webinar, I focused on value momentum investing. I hope you caught my webinar yesterday where I talked about buying great businesses when they're selling at temporary discounts. Because when you buy a great business, over time, it always increases in value and that compounds your wealth over time. And that's how you build a multi-million dollar portfolio over time by consistently investing your savings. So with an average income, you can build a multi-million dollar portfolio. Now, if you missed my webinar yesterday, no worries, we're going to send you a limited time replay of the seminar. So we'll be sending that to you in a short while once we've edited that first webinar. So for today's session, I'm going to focus on trading. Now, if you've heard my previous webinars, you know there's a big difference between investing and trading. Investing is like getting married. So we focus on the fundamentals, right? You marry a great person, fundamentally good, you know, right? Uh, but in trading, it's like a one-night stand. We just get in and out within a few weeks, and that's it. We focus more on the technical analysis. So today's going to be focused, again, on swing trading. But specifically for today's session, I want to share with you a method I use uh, using options to achieve over 90% win rate through my swing trading. So with a very high win rate, with very consistent and sustainable uh, results, you're able to generate consistent monthly income for yourself, monthly cash flow. So if you're already get your pen and paper ready, take lots of notes. Uh, if you've got questions, post your questions on the chat group. My team will be there to answer your questions live as fast as possible. And at the end of the webinar, I will also answer whatever questions are remaining. And of course, as usual, do visit our, our Piranha Profit site where all our courses and playbooks are on massive discounts during this limited period. And of course, at the end of the webinar, I'll be you know, sharing you a special offer for webinar attendees as well. Okay, so with that, let's get started. Now again, once again, disclaimer, I'm not a licensed financial advisor or financial planner. I invest and trade my own money in my own capacity. I can't tell you what to buy or what to sell. I can only tell you what I'm buying and what I'm selling. So you have to make your own decisions based on your objectives, your risk tolerance, as well as your financial situation. All right, so with that, let's, let's begin this journey. All right, so first let's talk about conventional stock trading, which means you trade by buying the underlying shares. Now, in conventional stock trading, the key to success is to find high probability trade setups. Remember, we can't predict the future. We can't predict for certain that the price of the stock is going up or going down in the short term. But we can find trades with high probability. And the highest probability in trading is to always trade with the trend. So in other words, you want to go long. You want to buy on an uptrend when the stock's on an uptrend, go short when the stock's on a downtrend. And the best time to buy on an uptrend is when the price is making a retracement. It's making a retracement or a dip on the uptrend, finding a strong level of support. So I keep telling all of you that prices move in wave patterns. Remember that? So when a stock's on an uptrend, you've got wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, and that pattern continues. On an uptrend, 
price makes you know higher highs and higher lows. So in trading, we always want to answer during a retracement when the price drops and hits a level of support. And this level of support could be a moving average, a Fibonacci level, a horizontal support and resistance level. Okay, and that's where we want to enter long. So for example, take a look at this chart. And you can see that this particular stock is on a very clear uptrend. One of the ways that you can identify a clear uptrend is looking at the moving averages. The moving averages should be arranged from the smallest to the biggest moving average. So this is the 20 EMA. There's a red dotted line, 20 exponential moving average. The blue line is the 40 EMA, okay? So when a 20 EMA is above the 40 EMA, it tells you that the short-term trend is up, all right? Short-term trend is up when 20 above 40, right? And when the 50 moving average, the, the blue line, 50 simple moving average above the 150 simple moving average, the medium term trend is up. So I like to buy, I like to go long when short term uptrend, medium term uptrend, which means 20 above 40, 50 above 150. That tells me that the trend is clearly an uptrend. Okay. And I want to buy when the price uh, retraces to a support level. So in this case, you can see the wave pattern, right? Wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down. Every time it waves down, notice it finds support at the 50 moving average. So we only want to trade stocks with a very clear pattern. Not all stocks have a clear pattern. Avoid stocks that have erratic patterns. You want to only trade stocks with clear patterns that are repeatable. So in this case, you can see that for this stock, it's a very repeatable pattern, right? So you know the 50 is a strong support, so price waves up. Now this time when it waves down, boom. Could we buy right there? Yeah, but you know, you could wait for a confirmation candle, like a you know bullish candle. And then once you are confident that, okay, it's gonna continue the trend, what do you do? That's right, you go along, you buy. So in this case, we buy at say 235. But remember, there's no guarantee it's gonna go up, correct? In trading, after you buy, it could still go down. So we need a stop loss. So in trading, you've got to have a stop loss. Unlike investing when there's no stop loss, trading, you got to have a stop loss. It's like in a one night stand, you got to use protection because you don't know who they really are, <laughs> okay? So in this case, we put a stop loss at say 220. Now, as you know, in trading, it's very important where you put the stop loss. You put it too close, it gets stopped out easily through manipulation. So you want to put it far enough from the support so that it can't get stopped out that easily, right? So if you take it my trading courses, you know that, okay, you wanna put the stop loss far enough, like, you know, one ATR average true range below the support level, correct? Okay, so we buy at 235 in this case, stop loss at 220, and we call this our one R, remember that? What is R? Our risk that we're taking. So in this case, the risk is $15 per share. So if it's a losing trade, here's a stop loss, we lose 15 bucks per share. Remember that? We lose one hour. So where do we put our profit target? We always want to take profit when the profit is more than our initial risk. So when we lose, we lose one hour. When we make money, we want to make more than one hour. Okay, so example, we put our profit target at 265. Why? Because that would be $30. Uh, potential profit. So we're risking 15 bucks to make 30 bucks. We're risking one hour to make two hour. Okay. And that's, that's trading, right? So that's conventional trading, how many people trade stocks. Do you make money? Of course you do. But what's the challenge of conventional stock trading? What's, what's the, the, the problem with conventional stock trading? Well, let's take a look. The problem is that as a trader, you only win if the price goes up, correct? You only win if the price goes up. So if the price goes up and you take profit, then you make money, you win the trade. But if the price goes sideways or does not go up enough or goes down, 
what happens? That's right, you don't win. Okay, so you only win in one out of many scenarios. That's why in trading, your win rate on average, I don't care how good a trader you are, what kind of technical analysis you use, uh, MACD, you use uh, Fibonacci, Ichimoku Cloud, Ichi Backside, I don't care what <laughs> indicators you use, in the long run, you only win 55 to 60% of the time. The best traders in the world only win 60% of the time. I can tell you that many professional traders would sell their grandmother for 60% win rate, okay? Now, but even though in trading, your win rate's like 55 to 60%, do you still make money? Of course you do, why? Because when you win, you win more. When you lose, you lose less. Remember that, that's, that's trading, right? So if you take 100 trades and your win rate says 50, 5% win rate, so expect to have uh, 55 wins and 45 losses, right? Over a large sum of trades. So again, when you lose, you lose one hour. So total, you lose 45, oops, what's happening? That's very strange. It's moving by itself. Is there a ghost around? Okay, hope not, All right? Okay, let me use my pen. In my pen, my pen is, uh, getting lonely, all right? Okay, so when you lose, you lose 45 times one R, right? So you lose 45 R, remember that? When you win, you win two R. So 55 times two, that's 110 R. So 110 R minus 45 R, you make 60 R over 100 trades. And say it takes you one year to make a hundred trades on average. That's about, you know, 10 trades a month on average. So in a year you make 60 R. So what is R, right? So if you risk 1% per trade, 60 R would be 60% return a year, which is okay, not bad, right? So the point is in, in trading, in conventional trading, if you risk 1% per trade and you are right 55% of the time, you're making a 60% return a year, which is not bad, which is pretty good, right? Now, again, so that is conventional trading. All right, guys. Now, again, the other problem with conventional trading is that as you've learned from Elson's seminar, Elson talked about price manipulation. There are some market makers who are bastards in the market. They can see your stop loss. They drive the price down and they hit your stop loss and they cause you to lose the trade and then the price goes up and you go, ah, bastards, right? Okay, so that happens, okay? So these are the challenges with conventional stock trading, but you still make pretty good money. So for me, I ask myself this question, how could I make money whether the price goes up, whether the price goes sideways or the price goes down, how do I make money in every situation? or it goes up a bit, you know, how do I do that? And the answer is there's a way to do that. And that's what I'm doing right now in many of my trades, using options, all right? Specifically, using a strategy known as bull put option spreads. Write this down, bull put option spreads. Now, this is nothing new. I didn't invent this, okay? This has been around for many, many years, but the way I trade it is very different from the way other people trade it. I kind of like modified it. And I call it the bull put option, ex sorry, the bull put extreme option spread trading strategy. So the great thing about this strategy is that as a trader, you win regardless of whether the price goes up, the price goes sideways or the price goes down. Now, of course you can lose if the price collapses. Yeah, yeah, you, you can lose if it collapses, right? But I'm gonna show you how we avoid those doomsday scenarios. So as long as it's not a doomsday scenario, price goes up, goes sideways, goes down, even down 10%, you are still winning in every single trade. And this gives us a 90, uh, over 90% 90 win rate in this particular strategy. All right. So for those of you who have not learned options, you may be asking, what the heck is a put? What the heck is an option? Okay, so let me go through some of the basics right now so you understand what I'm talking about. So first of all, what's an option? An option is a contract. 
that you can either buy or you can sell. And you've got call options and put options. For this strategy, we are only using put options. So forget calls, only puts. So what the heck's a put? Okay. So a put option is a contract that if you buy a put option, it gives you the right. It gives you the right to sell 100 shares of the underlying stock at a specific agreed upon price. And we call that the strike price. So you lock in the price you want to sell the stock at, and you can sell the stock at this price anytime before or on the expiration date. So every time you buy a contract, it's 100 shares. One contract of an option is 100 shares of the stock. Right? Write that down, okay? So let me give you an example right now. So over here, you've got the Facebook December 250 put option. And this option is selling at $4, all right? So what does this mean? So this means that if you buy this option, you have the right to sell Facebook shares at this locked-in price of $250. Again, you can choose whichever strike price you want. So if you choose this strike price, it means that you can sell Facebook at $250 anytime before the expiry date, which in this case, for example, expires in 30 days. Now, of course, by having this special right, you have to pay a premium to get this option. So the premium in this case is $4. So you pay $4 and you have locked in the sales price of Facebook at $250. Does this make, this make sense? Okay, question. Who buys these put options, right? Why would someone want to buy this put option? Well, few reasons. Number one, it could be they are betting that Facebook's gonna crash. So they are speculating. So they buy a put option. So whenever the stock price falls, the put option is worth more money. So they make money on the put option. Or it could be someone has a lot of Facebook shares and they are buying this put option to protect their investment. So a put option is kind of like an insurance policy. They are buying insurance on their stock. So let me give you an example over here. Right, some people are saying they can't hear me. Can I check that you guys can still hear me or is it one or two people? Uh, if you can hear me, please type yes. Okay, great. So all of you can hear me. If you can't, do check your settings, guys. Okay, all right. So let me give you an example. Let's imagine uh, there's a person, a fund manager, let's say a person, and he's holding Facebook shares. And right now, Facebook is, uh, the market price is $270. Let's call this person A holding Facebook shares at $270. Right. And this person uh, recently read a, a doomsday article that people said, hey, the market's going to collapse. We're all going to die, right? So this person is nervous and he thinks that Facebook is going to collapse to zero. So what does he do? He says, okay, to protect my shares, I'll buy this put option. So this person will buy this put option and he will pay $4 premium. And once he buys the put option, what happens? He has locked in the right to sell Facebook shares at $250 within the next 30 days. Now, some of you could be wondering, hey, why can't this guy just put a stop loss at 250? Well, he could, but normally sophisticated investors and fund managers, they rather buy put options. It's more sophisticated, all right? So does this make sense? Okay, so if Facebook drops to zero, let's say doomsday scenario, Facebook drops to zero, this person, he's okay because he has already locked in the sales price to 250. So even if Facebook goes to zero, he can sell his Facebook shares at $250. Does that make sense? 
okay? If Facebook goes to uh, $200, again, this person is not worried because he has bought this insurance policy that allows him to sell Facebook at $250. So whatever happens to Facebook, no matter how low it goes, he can sell it at $250. So can you see that a put option is like an insurance policy that this person buys to insure his shares. It's kind of like buying house insurance. Imagine this is your house. You're afraid your house is gonna burn down because it's a fire coming, right? So you buy this insurance policy. If your house goes to zero, the insurance company allows you to get $250 value on your house. Does it make sense? We follow so far? Okay, great. Now, what happens if Facebook stays at 270 or Facebook goes up in price or Facebook goes down, but it doesn't go down below 250 by the expiry date? What will happen to this option that this guy buys? You tell me. Right, let me repeat my question, right? So if Facebook doesn't collapse to zero, right? Facebook goes up, it stays at 270 or it goes down to 260, it goes to 255. What happens to this put option at the expiry date? That's right. That's right, guys. So what happens is this put option becomes worthless. So every day that passes, the put option will lose value, lose value, lose value until the expiration date. This put option from $4, the put option will become worthless. You become zero, okay? Um, so this person will lose $4, but he's okay because it's like, it's like you pay car insurance every year and if your car doesn't crash, you're okay because you, you paid that money for protection. Does it make sense? Okay. Now, how about the person who sold the put option? Let's call this person, person B. So person B is the person who sold the put option to person A. So person B collected this premium. So if Facebook stays at 270 or goes up or goes down, what happens to person B? Person B will keep the $4. Person B will keep the $4. Does that make sense? So person B is like the insurance company. And person A is the person who buys insurance. Do we follow that so far? Okay. So question for you. Again, person A, what is person A's break even point? So Facebook has to drop below 250 for person A to be worth his while, right? In fact, uh, Facebook has to drop to 250 minus $4, which is uh, 246 for it to be worth person A's while. As long as Facebook stays above 246, person B will be really happy. Next one so far? Okay, great. Let's go on to the next slide. So let's look at the two transactions. So again, in the market, you can buy a put or you can sell a put option. So again, the person who buys the put option is the person who buys insurance. Remember that, they're they are buying insurance and they pay the premium. Who collects the premium? The put seller collects the premium. Now, once the person buys the put, he has the right to sell the shares to the put seller at the strike price. In this case, $250. So person A, to make money, he wants the stock price to go down, okay? He wants the stock price to go down because as the stock price goes down, the put option becomes more and more valuable. Okay, but for the person who sold the put, by collecting the premium, he's obligated, he's obligated to buy the shares 
from the put buyer at $250. So for the put seller, he wants the stock price to go up, to stay the same, or even to go down slightly, that's fine. But as long as the, the option, the, the stock doesn't collapse, the put seller would receive the premium and the option will expire worthless by the expiration date. Okay, so that's how options work. That's how put options work. So let me give you uh, an example right now of how I use this in trading. Okay, so this is a CRM, this is Salesforce. And as you can see, it's on a clear uptrend, right? The 20 is above the 40 moving average, the 50 is above the 150 moving average. So on an uptrend, we expect the price to continue going up, correct? Or you know what? It may continue going sideways or it may go down a bit. But there's a strong support here. You can see there's a strong support at 233. Okay. So if you are confident that the stock will go up, go sideways or go down, but it will not go below this level, what could you do? You could sell a put option way below there at, at say um, 215, for example, right? So if you take a look at the option chain, this is the option chain over here. Now, the first thing is when you sell an option, how many days to expiration do you sell? It's up to you, there's no right or wrong. But normally for me, I like to sell an option between 30 to 45 days to expiration. Okay, 30 to 45 days to expiration. So in this case, I choose to sell the 24 December expiry. So this option I'm selling expires on the 24th of December in 33 days, in 33 days. So I can choose whichever strike price I want. It's up to me. I can choose whatever strike price I want. So I'm gonna choose the 215 strike price. Let me say why 215, okay? The reason is because of this thing called Delta. So I like to sell the option at the delta of 10, okay? Now, what the heck does 10 delta mean, okay? So 10 delta means there's only a 10% chance that CRM will go below 215 at the expiration date. Okay, let me repeat that. So right now, CRM is at 258, right? Right now, the stock's at 258. What is the chance that it will drop and stay below 215 in 33 days? It is only a 10% chance that it will happen. Now, this is statistics calculated by the software. It's only a 10% chance. So in other words, if I sell this put option, there's a 90% chance that the stock will not go below 215 by expiration and hence this option I sell will become worthless. And when it becomes worthless, I get to keep the premium, which is 196. So I sell this put option, I collect $1.96. By expiration, the option becomes worthless, I keep the 196. And I've got a 90% chance that it's gonna happen. So the great thing in options is that you don't have to guess what is your chance of winning because it is calculated from the software and it's based on statistics. It's kind of like insurance company. They know the probability of a payout uh, in the insurance claim, okay? So let's look at a chart right now. So again, CRM is now at 258. That's the current price, okay? So I sell a put option at, 215 strike price. And you saw earlier on that by selling this put option, I collect $1.96. Remember, one contract is 100 shares. So in other words, I collect $196. And in 33 days, this option would expire worthless. 
if the price doesn't stay below that in 33 days. And again, my chance of it staying above is 90%. Okay. Now you can see that in this case, my strike price at 215 is about 17% below the current price. So for the price to go below that, it has to drop 17% in 33 days. And if you buy great companies that are big companies, it's very rare for that to happen. All right, it's very rare for that to happen. Okay, does it make sense? Okay. Now, but you may say, Adam, what if, what if it happens, right? What if the stock price really goes down below 215 in 33 days? What's gonna happen? If that happens, then I'm, as a put seller, I'm obligated to buy the shares at the strike price. All right, which means I have to buy this company at $215. And if I have to buy 100 shares per contract, I have to pay $21,500. Now, some of you may say, but I don't want to own the shares. I don't have 21 grand. What do I do? Okay. So if you don't want to own the shares or you don't have the money to buy the shares, if that happens, then you buy another put at 210. Okay. You buy another put at 210 to hedge your position. So it's kind of like you sell insurance but you buy reinsurance. I repeat that. You sell insurance and you buy reinsurance. So in this case, I sell this insurance policy. I collect 196. But to protect myself, because I, I don't want to own the shares, I buy a put option. I buy another insurance policy and I pay $1.50. Remember, when you sell an option, you collect money. When you buy an option, you pay money. But I collect a 196, I pay a dollar 50, I still make a credit of 46 cents. So we call it a net credit. And hence we call this a credit spread. Let me say only 46 cents, that's not exciting, right? But again, one contract is 100 shares. So every contract I buy, let me write this down. Okay, every contract that I buy, I will get $46. If I buy 10 contracts, I get $460. If I buy 100 contracts, I get $4,600. All right, so all I got to do is to scale up the number of contracts in order to target the amount of premium that I want to collect. Does it make sense? Okay. So again, you're selling insurance, collecting premium and buying reinsurance. So what does it mean? It means that I'm obligated to buy the shares at 215. But now I have the right to sell it at 210. So I buy at 215. If, if shit happens, I buy at 215. I sell it at 210. What's the most I can lose? What is the most I can lose? The most I can lose is the difference between the two strikes, which is five bucks. The more I repeat that, the most that I can lose is five dollars. Now, some of you are thinking, but Adam, I'm only making 46 cents, but I could lose five bucks. Are you crazy? Are you nuts? right? You're risking five bucks to make 46 cents. Yes, that's precisely what happens if you allow the stock to collapse and expire worthless, you could lose five bucks. It could happen, okay? But the way I trade it is I will cut loss very early. The moment I see the stock breaking the support level, or changing the trend, I will get out very early so that I'll never lose five bucks. I'm going to show you what I do in a while, right? So if I'm wrong 
And will I be wrong sometimes? Sure. It's like an insurance company. Eventually, you sell insurance, you sell insurance. Eventually, some idiot is going to have a car accident. You're going to pay out more than the insurance you collected, right? But the idea is to manage your trade such that you won't lose five bucks, okay? The most I will lose would be about a about dollar forty, And that's the max I would lose. And I'm going to show you again how I manage my trade in a while. But most of the time, I won't lose a dollar forty. I'll only lose like fifty cents or hundred uh, or hundred cents, which is a dollar. All right. So generally, what we call this, we call this a bull put spread, or we call this a put credit spread. So let me give you the proper de definition. So this strategy is called the bull put spread extreme strategy. And with this strategy, I'm achieving between 5 to 15% per month consistently, okay? So it is a strategy where I sell far out of the money put credit spreads on uptrending stocks at strong support levels. And I sell it at a delta of 10. Again, why 10 delta? Because it means I get a 90% win rate. So this gives me an ROI, a return on investment of 5 to 15% a month with a 90% win rate. So again, the idea of this strategy is to find companies which are on a strong uptrend. And again, we only do this on very big companies, on Facebook, on Amazon, on Coca-Cola. We don't do this on small companies. Right, I repeat that we only do this on really big companies that are very, very safe. Okay, because we know big companies very unlikely the price will collapse, it will drop sometimes, but it won't drop that much. So, when it's at a strong level of support, I sell a put option and buy another put option so that the difference allows me to collect a premium which expires in 20 30 days. and the strike price of this put is at least 15 to 20% below the current price. So for it to reach the strike price is very, very difficult. Okay. Now, let me show you my, my portfolio right now. This was about two months ago, as you can see, these are all the put spreads in my portfolio. And so when I sell a put spread, I sell it at 91 cents, for example, okay? So as time passes, the options lose value. So from 91 cents, you'll go to 80 cents, 70 cents, 60 cents, and 47 cents. So the more it drops, the more money I make. Eventually when this goes to zero, I will make the full profit. All right. So you can see that this was captured about two months ago in my account. So let me show you my account today. This is my live account today. And I hope that I'm connected because sometimes they've got maintenance. Give me a second. Um, okay. Right. So this is my live account as of right now. So you can see currently I've got one, two, let me make it bigger, All right? I think it's a bit small. Okay, so right now I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got ten bull put spread positions right now. You can see these are the prices I sold it at. Forty-eight cents. I sold ADSK. Right now it's dropped to nine cents. So I've made a thousand dollars. Now again, when it goes to zero. I'll make the full premium of $1,500, all right? Uh, Chewy, I sold it at 56 cents. It's now dropped to 18 cents. I am making $1,000. When it drops to zero, I make an additional 500. So uh, on each position, my premium is $1,500, okay? Uh, this is one that I just sold on Friday, right? CRM, can you see CRM? I sold it at 43 cents. It's still at 43 cents because I just sold it. Okay, so every day that passes, the price will drop, the options will, will get worthless. When it goes to zero, I'll collect uh, $1,500 or uh, roughly about $1,500, right? So these are my 
current open positions. And right now you can see my account has gone from 1.3 million to 1.5 million, right? It's about $200,000 in just two months. Now, of course, this is a combination of these trades as well as capital gain on the stocks I hold. It's a combination of both, right? But just on these trades alone, I've made over $60,000 in uh, about two to three months, all right? So this is one account. Uh, I've got many accounts. This is my other account over here, uh, which is uh, my other account, which you can see I'm also selling spreads. So I sold on Zoom. You can see Zoom, right? And making 67 bucks on this. Um, Viva, right? Uh, made 300 bucks. And you can see right now, what is my percentage profit and loss over here? Spotify, right? I'm making four, 400 bucks on that. Yeah, and yeah, you can see I, I enter these trades. That's Facebook making 400 bucks. I've got 200 bucks more to go. And I also trade this on my Think or Swim account. So this on Think or Swim. And there we go. You can see these are all the trades that I have currently. ADSK. Oops, right. Amazon, Alibaba, Chewy, CRM. So these are all my open profits, about 1,500. Now this is a much smaller account, right? So I trade this in small accounts, big accounts. And, and um, yeah, so you, you can do it. This is a strategy that many of my students love because again, it's got a very high win rate and very consistent income on a monthly basis. Uh, these are some of my recent students sharing. Um, is Hi Master, Fang Bang, and Adam sharing my year to date result? No words can express my gratitude for all your guidance and teachings. My favorite strategy is BPS, Boo Put Spread, Boo Put Spread Extreme, and the Earnings Probability Spread. And you can see it's up 89% so far for the year. Okay. Um, this other gentleman, right? 6,000 profits from three. Boo put spread extreme trades I took on 2nd November when markets were falling hard. Great payoff in just two days. Thanks, Adam, for teaching us such a brilliant strategy. Okay, this is, uh, this is him again, right? You can see he made a total of $10,000 US uh, month to date in October, right? Now, some people ask, uh, how much money do I need to trade options? It depends on the strategy. There are certain strategies you need a bigger account. Like if you sell covered calls, yes, you need 100 shares. If you sell cash secured puts, you need enough cash to buy the shares. So there are certain strategies where you need a bigger account. But the good news is that there's many option strategies that we use that require minimal capital of you know, at least $2,000 or $3,000 you can trade comfortably. So this one gentleman where he said, this is my options trading account. It's a small account. I started with 2000 in January and added 12,000 later in February. Now it's grown to $50,000. All investors need to understand options. It will help you to minimize risk and maximize returns. If you don't understand options, it's like going to war with a knife and a spear. All right, I'm not a sales rep and Adam is not my real brother. <laughs> yeah, because someone in the chat group Asked him, hey, are you Adam's brother? You're promoting Adam. Said, I'm, I'm not his brother, right? Um, and yeah, that's his account. You can see his year-to-date profit down there. Very, very impressive. Give me a sec. Let me just make it a bit uh, bigger for you guys. All right, there. Year-to-date profit, $40,000. Uh, just in the last five to six months. Uh, again, he started with only 2K. He added 12K. And now has grown his account to $40,000 using these strategies. And I can tell you that the person that I'm the most proud of when it comes to options trading is my partner, Patrick. Okay, now, for those of you who don't know, uh, my company, we have been around for 15 years. We started in 20, oh, sorry, what am I talking about? We've been around for 17 years. We started in 20, oh, sorry, what am I talking about? 18 years, so this is our 18 year, right? We started in 2002. We've been around for 18 years. And the person who has been with me 
since day one is Patrick. He's my CEO. He's the CEO of the company. And he's the guy who has been responsible for building the business. As you know, I don't like to manage people. I don't like to run businesses, okay? I'm an introvert. I like to be alone. So I only like to trade. So while I'm trading the markets, I'm a, I'm a professional trader and investor and I love talking. Patrick does not, doesn't like public, publicity. Uh, he doesn't like to talk. In fact, he said, Adam, don't show my picture, please. But I want to irritate him. So I'm purposely showing his picture right now. He's going to be pissed off, but I don't care. Okay. And the funny thing is that in the last 18 years, of running the business, he has never been interested in trading because he said, I'm too busy running the business. You do the trading, I run a business. But recently, because this strategy is so easy to use um, and it only takes a couple of minutes a day uh, that he started using this strategy as well. And he's been trading this for now about five months. And he said, thanks to my partner, Adam, and our colleagues, they inspired me to start my my options trading journey during the lockdown period. Yeah, one big reason is because, see, Patrick is someone who loves to travel. He loves to entertain clients. And he's been very busy for 18 years. But because of the lockdown, now he's at home running the business. He's totally bored. So for the first time in 18 years, he started trading out of boredom, all right? And he started with 20 grand. He added more funds as I became more confident as of 21st November, which is about five months since he started, I've made 109,000 in profits with an ROI of 58% based on my investment of $180,000. To keep my life simple, I mainly only use one strategy, okay, which is the bull put spread that takes two to three hours a night. Actually, you don't need that much time, right? But he just likes to stare at it. I don't know why. My average returns per month for the last four months is between 6 to 8% per month. And this is his uh, screenshot of his um, uh, portfolio. He was very kind to send to me. As you can see, his overall year-to-date profit, five months, $109,000. Just on that one strategy that I showed you, the bull put spread. And now his account has grown to 285,000 US dollars. Okay. Now, what I've shown you so far, I hope it's been useful. I hope it's been eye-opening, but it's only one strategy. Okay. In the options course that is taught by Bang Fan Van and myself, right, we both teach the course together. Uh, they are all together 16 powerful option strategies that you will master. 16 of them, right? So if, I've just shared one with you. There are 16, okay? They will allow you to profit under any market condition with any asset. If you want to catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now. Click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you want to check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're going to learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you want to join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.